Hello and welcome to ADHD Support Talk Radio. This is your host, Tara McGillicuddy. I'm an adult ADD productivity coach, and I am also the founder and director of ADDclasses.com. And at ADDclasses.com, we provide virtual support and education to people affected by ADD and ADHD. We offer free teleseminars each month. We have an extensive ADD audio library with more than 100 courses. And we also offer more in-depth support programs. And you can learn more about ADDclasses.com by going to the website www.addclasses.com. And I do have a bit of an announcement before we start talking on the show today. On April 22nd, we are going to be offering a free teleseminar. Linda Hilger, who is our guest today, is going to be hosting the free teleseminar. And the title is The Adult ADD Guide to Focus, Clarity, and Motivation. And again, that's April 22nd at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And if for some reason you cannot make the live call the live class you will be able to listen to a free replay for two weeks but you do need to register before the live call and you can register at www.addclasses.com and i would like to welcome back linda hilger to adhd support talk radio in just a moment linda and i are going to be discussing clutter and the overwhelm associated with clutter when you have adult add or adhd so welcome back linda Hey, welcome, Tara. Thank you so much for having me on today. This is great, and I really love the um, the topic that we're going to be talking about today because there's a lot of people that have questions about it. Yes, definitely. And you know, you're actually um, one of our first, the first guests I had on ADHD Support Talk Radio when I first started airing it back in 2008. And I know our listeners loved you, so I'm really glad that you've come back and really hope you'll be a regular guest again this year because people really connect with what you talk about. So thanks, Linda, so much for coming on. Before we get started talking about clutter and overwhelm, can you let our listeners know a bit about yourself? Who are you in relationship to helping people affected by ADD and ADHD? And also, how can they get in touch with you after the show has aired? Oh, how nice. Thank you. Um, Well, I'm a professional organizer, and I specialize in helping people with ADD um, organize their home and work and all functions therein. And um, um, I guess I'm best known for ADD Boot Camp, which ADD Classes hosts, and it's the the longest-running class for adults with ADD that is Internet-based. And that's quite a um, a cool thing. We've had thousands of people go through that over the years, and it's awesome. And I'm the author of the ADD Audio Coach, which is the te- textbook for ADD Boot Camp and is a step-by-step program for uh, getting organized with um, ADD. So um, if any of your listeners are interested, um, they can get in touch with me at lindahilger.com. And so the spelling of that is linda at lindahilger.com is L-I-N-D-A-H-I-L-L-G-E-R. And um, I'll be happy to um, send resources and support their way if they have a question. So thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Linda. Yeah, we, we were going back and forth about, you know, what should we talk about in today's show? One of the ideas that we... um came up with was clutter and I said yeah you know I haven't done a show about clutter in years and that is actually one of the most listened to shows that I've done so you know when you have ADD or ADHD clutter can be a huge challenge and we were talking about how we're going to approach this and I said you know I think you know there there may be more but three main areas when it comes to clutter are three different main types of clutter that adults with ADHD deal with. Um, And the first one is the physical clutter, you know, the trash, the junk, the clothes. Um, And then there's emotional clutter or, you know, your thoughts, your emotions and all that. And then the one that a lot of us have to deal with now in this day and age is technological clutter. So, Linda, you know, where would you like to begin when it comes to talking about clutter? (laughs) Isn't it? You know what? I love them all. It almost feels like um, with ADD, it's like a big onion, you know? We have physical clutter around. We have 
man, technology is a topic that we could just delve into like immediately. And um, all of that, the physical clutter, the upcoming events, leads to that emotional um, feeling of overwhelm. And um, and where do I start with all these independent things I have to get done? So emotional clutter is, man, all of those are a topic on their own. I think the best one to start with actually is um, I kind of like the physical clutter issue mm-hmm. first. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, because I, I think that's one of the biggest ones and one of the ones that a lot of us deal with. Um, yeah, so it's it's stuff, and I mean, what 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 is your definition of clutter, or how, how would you describe clutter? I mean, I'm sure everyone listening you know, knows what clutter means to them, but what is your definition of it? Let me just circle around and look at my own desk. Um, <laughs> since I was in the middle of um, of a project today, um, I have I wish I could just take a snapshot. I suppose put all the independent items that are floating around on flat surfaces um, when it comes to f- to physical clutter that's what bugs my eye and mm-hmm. years ago when i was really overwhelmed and totally lost um i just didn't know actually how to um how to get grounded and clean it up i didn't know how to group things up and how to um make a daily process out of clearing my area so that my mind could then relax and when I looked at things it would be less stimulating. So I think in every individual item left left in piles of things so that it becomes overwhelming. That's how I feel about clutter. So what items that don't have a home or haven't been placed in their home. Yeah, and like you, were, you start out saying, you know, like stuff that's on – flat surfaces and I'm looking around my house I'm like yeah all my platter seems to be on flat surfaces um yeah it's it, it's it a magnet you old- and you know what I think sometimes logically we understand what to do with it like if somebody said okay there's a pile of dirty clothes on your floor logically what do you do with that oh I put in a hamper and do laundry but I, I think part of it is we got we our mind was in other places because we have mind clutter. There's another type of clutter, that emotional <laughs> clutter. And, you know, we weren't focusing on, okay, the dirty clothes goes in the hamper. And then, I know, I see a pile. I'm like, oh, I have a pile of dirty clothes on my floor. That's where my other dirty clothes is going. I don't think I logically think that. I don't know if that becomes like an actual, I don't go through the thought process, but my mind automatically puts it there. And then, yeah, the piles grow and it becomes, I think you use the word, it stimulates the brain, and it just, I think it overwhelms and can shut down the brain. Yes, yes, and it doesn't seem, when we talk to ADD people in general, I know the years through um, speaking with clubs and uh, through boot camp classes, when we first uh, go through the time management section and um, actually identify what the process of all this how did the clutter get there in the first place? We were moving around doing things. Our mind was busily doing things. And taking shortcuts becomes a, 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 like a learned way to, I'll just put it here and I'll come back to it. I'll just come mm-hmm. put it here. And I suppose from my point of view, when I think of growing up with ADD, and for me I was dyslexic as well, initially when I only had a few things like school, work, or maybe um, clothing that I had to manage in my bedroom um, as as an early adult, I used to leave things out so I would remember them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I and then life got busy. You know, I started doing work and I started having bills, so I started leaving bills out. I started leaving paperwork out on top of the piles from laundry or on top of the piles for uh, things I wanted to remember for fun or hobbies. And um, and what initially worked when I left things out, I remembered it. That was great when I only yeah. had two or three things. What happened to my life and what I hear people saying is that in adult in the adult world, we take on a whole lot really fast. Life yeah. gets busy. So pretty soon the, the idea of leaving piles out to remember to do it backfires. Uh-huh. And pretty soon we have 50 piles. Or, you know, we have a whole library of magazines or newspapers that eventually we're, we're leaving it out by the by the couch thinking we want to read it but eventually Mm -hmm. we're looking and it feels stressful because there's 15 of them 
Yeah, because you know. originally we'll start with the out of sight, out of mind thing where we're not putting it away, we're keeping it on the open, you know, because that's how a lot of us, you know, process better is when we see it. But what happens is it gets covered up with the rest of the clutter and the stuff. So the thing we're trying to do in the first place doesn't work anymore. Yes, yes. And I think yeah. all of that physical, the physical wanting to get to things really comes down to creating uh, standard windows of time to get to those things or yeah. windows of time to clear it away, um, escape from it. If if a, if a person is feeling really emotionally overwhelmed or emotionally like they have a ton of things coming up or things that they have to think through. Because, you know, you said an interesting thing earlier. You mentioned um, when you go to do something, just wanting to do the whole thing and not thinking out the little steps. So a lot of times I think when in my head, when I think of a big process, my head just wants to go there and do it. But then when I start doing it, I realize, oh, my God, I'm missing this. Where is this? And I have to go find it, particularly technology. I have to go find I have to go learn the software to mm-hmm. do the thing. And it stops me in the middle of my projects. Yeah. And so I leave it out. I used to leave it out so that I'd remember to go back once I yeah. learned it or once I gathered the information. And that just made another pile, and it goes into physical clutter. Yeah, and, and that's that? another distraction, too, when you're getting up from your office to go to the kitchen and get a cup of coffee. You get distracted by the clutter that's on your kitchen table or wherever it is, and you know, sometimes you'll you know, get lost on the way to getting a cup of coffee that's you know, 10 feet away. So that's like another issue that we have with that clutter. You know, first we're overwhelmed because we didn't put it away, we can't find stuff. Then we're overwhelmed by the fact that it's there and it's too overwhelming to make a dent. And then it distracts us. So there's, it's amazing. It's really thinking about that, the clutter. And we're just on the physical clutter. Like how much, how much, how many challenges and issues it can really cause us. Yes, I so agree. So uh, one of the really cool things about going through the process of, you know, a lot of times naturally organized people, they can't identify very well what it is, what their trick is to flowing nicely through time, to having things where they are when you need them. It's it, it's almost like it's it's just so natural. A lot of times I can't identify it. But it's interesting when you talk with um, ADD coaches or all the professionals you have on your ADD classes site. It's really wonderful to hear what they've gone through as people with ADD mm-hmm. having to actually go through the process of learning how to organize because then they can make it simple for the rest of our community, 15 million of us out there. And it's amazing, as I look back, and my whole career has been organizing for ADD, as I look back on that, I think to myself, wow, we had a big job like 20 years ago when you were doing ADD classes first. Um, We had a big job to figure out how to help our community, how to help ourselves. And when I see the books, when I see what you have um, come up with for classes and clubs and structures it just I'm, I'm really amazed by what our ADD community has come up with in ways to make it simple mm-hmm. to really structure things and, and minimize all of um, this these different types of clutter that can feel so overwhelming yeah. initially but then when you learn tricks you go ah I see what I was doing wrong and it, it's I funny some of them aren't, aren't even tricks like when it comes to clutter, sometimes or often, it's as simple as choosing a time, setting a timer, and clearing that clutter, throwing it away, putting it at home. But the thing is, those a lot of us with ADHD, we have trouble doing that ourselves. That's why, like, I know you do that, racers, and some of, some of the clubs you offer. Um, I know we did a clutter group at ADD classes years ago. We all, I also have the productivity circle where basically it's like one day you're just choosing what to do and doing it and I'm providing the time to do it, some accountability and structure. It, it's funny, people come into the groups and like, we, what am I supposed to learn? It's like, no, you're doing. And I think those of us with ADHD, because a lot of us are very intelligent and our brains are so I don't know, advanced or we work, our brains are always thinking and moving, our minds are always thinking and moving, we expect 
a, a system to get rid of clutter to be really advanced in and we make it so much more difficult than it needs to be. And yet, to create a system and keep up with it and maintain it, that's one thing. But for some of us, just choosing 10 minutes, like those of you who are listening right now, I challenge you to, you know, if you're home in an area where you have the clutter or an office, between now and the time we, you stop listening to this right now, clear some clutter away. I mean, that right there it is it's amazing that it's that simple process when somebody else tells you to do it and creates a structure and some accountability that, you know, you, you can reduce some of that overwhelm of the clutter. Yes, and you know what? I love that. I love that you just did that because it, it, what a favor to um, themselves if they take that 10 minutes and they just say, I'm going to move all the simple things that I know I have control over, all the simple things, I'm just going to put them where I would normally look for them. You know, um, we we get bogged down by, oh, well, where is should it go? And yeah. to make it simple, it's where would you go if you needed it? Yeah. And, right, the association effect of here's where I put all my magazines, here's where I put my salt and pepper, my head knows where it goes, and when I need it, I'm looking right here to get it. Uh, one of the things that I find the easiest to show people is like the milk, we never have to search for milk. It's mm-hmm. never, like, frustrating. We're never out in the yard wondering, well, you know, where al- am I? Almost never. Some of us. Almost, almost never. Most right. put, might put it back in the freezer or a cupboard by mistake. But, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> right? We learn by, we have learned, most of us have learned that, wow, if we leave that out, it's going to go sour. Then it's a drag. We have to go get mm-hmm. some more. I can't take a shortcut with milk. I might as well just use it and put it right back. And it becomes this invisible, easy item. It's just mm-hmm. one item among what a house has a, has about 10,000 items in the average house. So that's that's a lot to maintain if you're a person with ADD, particularly mm-hmm. if you also have a work environment to maintain. So we're asking a lot from our ADD minds, and it seems it seems to really help if you can identify the simple things that never stress you out because they always go back and there's no shortcut. Mm-hmm. You know, for our listeners today, if if you find that that's true about milk, you can keep repeating the system and make it um, really pay off for other items. No, we, we've discussed a lot about the physical clutter. Before we move on, on to one of the other types of clutter, is there anything you haven't shared about it that you feel is important, Linda? Mm, in the boot camp class or in the audio coach, we talk about the quick clean system, which is a system, actually, it's the fastest, easiest way to walk into a room, get through it, to clean up the clutter, clean up the clutter and group everything up and and finish the room. And if anyone has ever watched um, an organizer or uh, watched an office, uh, what is that, a hotel room, if you've ever watched the cleaner go through a hotel room, then you'll know, you'll notice one thing about a hotel room. There's no clutter. It's all smooth, clean areas. And when a, when you watch someone go in and clean it, they go to specific steps, one after another after another, really fast. There's no confusion. They're not emotional about it. They're just physically getting it done really fast. And that is called, for us, that's called the quick clean. And uh, for anyone that's taken boot camp, then you know the quick clean system. And it's really about grouping things in order and moving them out into the place they go to. So if clutter, physical clutter, when we're talking about that, if that's an issue, you might want to, um, you can, you know, there's lots of people on forums and chat stuff talking, and you can always find out what the quick clean system is about or check out ABD classes. Um, and that's, that's good really because, you know, shortcut. some people do need that system to it benefit from having a system to follow. Um, Rather so, than just making it up every single time, you know? Yeah. Reinventing the wheel, which makes us crazy, and we get frustrated and move on to something else, and our clutter just gets worse. And that brings us to emotional, right, the frustration. Yeah. Thank you for listening to our discussion about adult ADD, ADHD, and clutter. And Linda will be returning next week to finish this discussion. In the meantime, don't forget to sign up for Linda's free addclasses.com teleseminar, the Adult ADD ADHD Guide to Focus, Clarity, and Motivation. And this free teleseminar takes place on Tuesday, April 22nd from 9 o'clock p.m. to 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. 
And if you can't make the live event, you can sign up for free and be able to, and you'll be able to listen to a recording for up to one week. Again, that's addclasses.com. You can sign up for the free teleseminar. And I look forward to being with you next week on ADHD Support Talk Radio. And this is your host, Tara McGillicuddy. And if you are listening to us on iTunes or Stitcher, you can find out more about me and the show by going to ADHDSupportTalk.com. Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 500,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how.